In the world of two-part resin material systems, a common mistake made by both beginners and experts alike is improper mixing of the material being used. In this video, I want to go through the basic mixing procedures and explain not only how to do it right, but where it often goes wrong. Our goal at BJB is to take the mystery out of the materials. So let's get started. The first order of business when working with any chemical would be personal protection appropriate gloves for skin protection, safety glasses or shields for eye and face protection, an apron, and sufficient ventilation. In certain situations, an appropriate respirator is needed depending on your working conditions or exposure levels. You should always refer to the material safety data sheets to see what's recommended for the material being used. The choice of a mixing container is a simple yet often overlooked source of problems when mixing materials. For starters, plastic containers and plastic or metal mixing utensils are highly recommended. The utensils can be reused after cleaning and in some cases the plastic containers can be saved. Paper tubs and wooden stir sticks are common sources of moisture contamination and should be avoided in many cases. Climates with high humidity have the most trouble with paper and wood supplies. On top of that, the natural porosity in paper cups can make the vacuum degassing process take longer by introducing more air into the material. The mixing container should be flat on the sides and bottom without ribs or irregular shapes. The problem is, is that unmixed A and B material tends to stagnate and hide in these areas. When you go to pour your mixed material into a mold or brush it onto a surface, the unmixed material hiding in the corners can end up in your part, potentially ruining it. The smooth sided container allows you to thoroughly scrape the sides and bottom of your cup. The type of mixing utensil can have a big impact on the outcome of your mixing process. A wide flat mixing stick or spatula is a typical tool we recommend for proper mixing. I've heard of a lot of creative things used while doing technical help calls over the years. Things like screwdrivers, dowels, broom handles, or even plastic spoons to name a few. Some people have even tried to achieve a thorough mix by using what I call the martini method, shaken, not stirred. But for all these creative methods, they're not as good as a simple stirring spatula used in the proper method. Why is a round dowel such a poor mixing utensil? It simply glides through the liquid too easily and does not shear or turbulate the two liquids as effectively as a wide flat spatula. A spoon does a good job at turbulating the liquid, but you can't effectively scrape the sides of the container. So keep it simple, don't overthink it, and you'll get proven results. How long you need to mix and the technique to mix the material tends to be subjective. If a material is very low in viscosity and easy to mix, then it takes less time. Once the two parts are combined, you simply stir the spatula in alternating circular motions being sure to stop and scrape the sides and bottom from time to time. Something higher in viscosity like silicone, highly filled materials, or brushable pastes can take several minutes and require much more physical work. With something like silicone where the A side is extremely thick and the B side is water thin, I plunge the spatula downward and pull across the container, helping to distribute the low viscosity B side from top to bottom. This helps loosen up the mixture before you begin to stir in a circular pattern. A handy mixing utensil to have for doing larger pours or fast reacting materials is a Jiffy Mixer. Available in small to large sizes, the Jiffy Mixer conveniently works with a standard cordless drill to make efficient work of mixing. It is also a great tool to use for remixing large containers that may have pigments or fillers that have separated in storage. It is also ideal for fast reacting foam systems where mixing time is short and a thorough blend is essential. When using a Jiffy Mixer, Make sure the blades stay submerged in the liquid. This will reduce the amount of air introduced into the mix. Another procedure we recommend when mixing materials is called the double cup or double mix method. This involves mixing in one cup and then transferring the mixture into a new clean cup to finish mixing. The idea is to leave behind any unmixed residue that inevitably clings to the bottom and sides of the first container. 
This method is especially important if you're mixing thick, high viscosity systems or you're mixing with a jiffy mixer since you can't effectively scrape the sides of the mix container like you would when hand mixing. Measuring out materials to the correct ratio is a common source for mistakes and is often an intimidating topic for beginners. It'd be great if all of our two-part systems had a one-to-one -one ratio, but there are reasons in the chemical formulation of these systems that doesn't always allow that to happen. It should also be noted that there can be a difference between one-to-one -one by weight and one-to-one -one by volume. This has to do with the fact that for the same given volume of two materials, one liquid might have a higher density than the other, so it weighs more while occupying the same space. Measuring the materials on an accurate scale is the most consistent way to ensure you end up with the correct ratio. Typically, the materials a BJB offers in an easy one-to-one -one or two-to-one volume ratio are designed to be processed in specific equipment that dispenses by volume. Using the eyeball method in an unmarked mixing container is a recipe for costly mistakes. BJB materials are often remarked as having user-friendly characteristics, but sticking to the mix ratio is an important key to getting the best out of that material. The two common types of scales used to measure out materials are digital and mechanical. Digital scales come in a variety of price ranges, weight capacities, and are available through many sources. It's a good investment to purchase an accurate scale, and these days there are many affordable scales to do the job. Mechanical scales, like this triple beam, are also common and highly accurate. They don't require batteries or wall power, so they can be used for years and years. Whatever your personal preference, a scale will be an invaluable tool when mixing materials. We'll show you how to calculate the correct mix ratio in another detailed video, so be sure to click on the link at the end of this video. A note while on the subject of ratio would be to mention that BJB always lists the ratio in a logical order of A, then B. Many people over the years have assumed that the A side is always 100 parts and the B side varies. There are many systems that we offer that will have a reverse scenario, where it could be 50 parts A to 100 parts B, and so on. Always check that you're mixing to the correct ratio so you don't accidentally reverse the numbers. Well that's it for now. Be sure to check out our other videos and website for more helpful information on BJV products.